Hi, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and sadly, I am still bringing um, news that is not so exciting for my listeners. And sometimes people ask me, why do I keep on talking about this COVID stuff? Why don't I let it go? And can't I see that it is over? Well, I have a unique perspective with regards to COVID. One, I've been researching it for over four years, focused on autoimmunity, which has been shown to be correct. And I see front and center patients. And that means that I have the opportunity to look at presentation of disease, reflect on the research, and try and tie the things together. That's quite unique at the moment. And this is why I'm able to largely predict what is happening. One of the things that I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to remind you as to what exactly is going on in the world. This is from Singapore with regards to the fact that they're getting a new COVID wave. I predicted that as well. So did Gert. And I'm going to try and explain about disease manifestations. And this is, uh, I quickly put this thought, this slide together, because I think this is what I am building towards with regards to the COVID 360, Advanced 360 course. But this is serious times. There, there is no way out of this. And just to let you know that I'm trying to think of how we can mitigate the storm. It's kind of like you know the storm is coming, you're out in the water. Is there anything you can do that can protect against what is going to happen? There is no way that everybody can be saved in this storm. One thing is for certain, if you're not listening, if you're not preparing, if you're not planning, your chances are significantly worse than anyone else. So before we start, just a reminder, this is going to be the final presentation of COVID Advanced 360. Um, we're looking at organ damage, technically anything around spike protein. And this is why, as I'm preparing for this, that I'm thinking carefully as to how to put this across so that it makes sense to the uh, listener in a coherent way, because the information is complex. How can I take this information and build it into something that is easy for someone to grasp? If you have not yet registered, please consider this is our pre-launch advanced course. Remember, it has everything in it. I've gone through 38 different modules already, and we're going to add some more in the final section, covering every aspect from immunity, autoimmunity, looking at the symptoms, looking at um, the characteristics of the disease. And we're now down to the, um, the issue with regards to clinical disease presentation. So this is quite comprehensive, and it is designed to help people for this storm. Because the problem is, is that there is no way to learn quickly if you don't have it in a format that makes sense. So that's the challenge. For those who want to join, please look in the description below. And please remember, there is a button right here. It looks like a bell. It should be right there. Click on that. And if you haven't clicked subscribe yet, please do. Because the subscribe button, for some reason on my videos, are usually hidden you almost think that they don't want people to subscribe. I wonder why. Anyway, let's get back to where we are with regards to the reality of this storm. This is what is happening now. So this is from the Economic Times India, and the date on it here, if you can't read it, is the 18th of May, 2024. And what they're looking at is that Singapore is seeing a new COVID wave. And they're advising there that they probably need to wear masks. And Singapore is seeing a new wave as authorities recorded more than 25,000, almost 26,000 cases from May 5th to 11th. And so there's another surge happening. And this is likely to be the KP2, KP3 variant. And this is expected, as I said, you know, uh, as Gert has pointed out, as you have variant after variant after variant, each time the immune system has to slightly readjust. The reality is that that adjustment is much more difficult in highly vaccinated regions because their immune system largely responds still to the original variant. 
and so it's slower and so therefore you have increased spread. The truth is that in many other parts of the world that have low rates where they have wide natural herd immunity, this is unlikely to be a major problem. You have to remember that these things can all be predicted. And in uh, about, I think it was in, uh, I'll show you this here. This was done in, um, it was done in December 28th, 2021. I did this uh, short podcast. So I've been doing this for a long time. And I used the analogy of autoimmunity in COVID-19. And I linked it to the movie Don't Look Up. This is where we are now. And lots of people who are telling you that the comet that is coming, that bright thing in the sky that everybody can see, is not really there. And so they, they, they were telling the public not to look up, because if they looked up, they could become worried about it. And they were telling the public, don't worry about it. It's not going to hit. But the scientists were saying it is on a direct collision course towards Earth and it is going to hit. For those people who watch the movie, you will see the parallels to where we are now. A lot of people are still saying, don't look up, don't worry, everything is under control. Just do the elephant and everything will be fine. This is a perfect storm, okay? Now, here is part of the issue, and I'll. I'll I'm not going to go through this in detail because this has to be part of the course and I want you to join the course. But here are the four tenets at the moment that I'm thinking about. It's not finalized in my mind. Certainly, autoimmunity. And you can then predict the autoimmune diseases. Immune failure. This may seem odd. Why would I have immune failure and autoimmunity where the immune system is hyperstimulated? Well, the immune failure is to do with particular immune cells. And these particular immune cells are likely to present, sadly, um, some of the, the things that people have been saying for a long time are actually going to be true. What we're going to see are more manifestations of lymphocyte failure. And so therefore, lymphocyte failure, if you want to understand the diseases, the prototype of lymphocyte failure is HIV. And when you have lymphocyte failure, you get a certain pattern of diseases because the lymphocytes are unable to protect the, the body. And so specific conditions start to increase. And so that's where you have that strange overlap between autoimmunity and immune failure. And then again, I have their interferon suppression. And interferon suppression is the one of the big ones because what we seem to be having in highly vaccinated regions is that they can't clear the virus. It just comes and goes. The problem with that is that even though you have mild symptoms with the virus, what it does is that it suppresses interferon. That's the modus operandi, operandi and it will do it in all organs. When you have that situation with immune suppression, interferon suppression, plus the, uh, the immune failure, you then get another cohort of diseases. And certainly with interferon suppression, viral diseases increase. Certainly flu is easier to spread. So this is why bird flu, if it does break out, will spread far more rapidly in highly vaccinated regions than other parts of the world that have herd immunity. Additionally, certain bacterial infections, including streptococcus, because it's linked to interferon production, and I'll go through that in the course, is likely to increase very significantly. So once you understand the tenets, you can predict what the diseases will be. One of the ones that people underestimate is this about bacterial toxicity. Part of the problem is, is that the, the virus seems to be able to alter the way how the bacteria function. So the bacteria start to function against us. And certain bacteria produce toxins, which destroy good bacteria. And then you can predict what kind of diseases will present in a situation where you have that kind of situation. And when you have a perfect storm, as I have in this image here, the perfect storm is when you have all of these happening at the same time. The sad news is, is that I think 
uh, how can I say this? This is not a hypothesis. It's just that you're not yet aware of it. And we haven't yet understood it to be able to speak about it. And when I talk about things like viral sepsis beforehand, just remember that I am oftentimes way ahead of the science because I have that unique perspective on how the disease may present. It, it's difficult to get a grasp of it if you don't take all of these pieces together and just extrapolate them. And in case there are clinical people who are watching this, just remember what you will have when you look at the disease is an overlap here will present with one kind of disease. An overlap here, the combination of interferon suppression and immune failure, will present with another kind of disease. If it's more gut-related symptoms and interferon present, um, suppression, it will present with a different... And this is why we're seeing multiple manifestations. And then when you have three things involved on each side, you technically can have nine to 12 different kinds of disease presentations. But to dissect it requires a basic understanding as to how the disease is occurring. It's complex, but again, once you understand that, I find that you're able to then look at a patient and uh, assess exactly, okay, this is where this person is likely to be. And in truth, what you then make a judgment on is, can this be fixed? And this is where we're heading into with this perfect storm, what I call triage medicine. You have to recognize that you can't fix everybody. The critical thing is to identify who can be fixed and to focus your attention on that because based on the perfect storm that is actually just kicking off, and for those people who disbelieved Gert, just remember, we are still, I mean, I still wish he hadn't set a date, but based on his timing, this is about right. He said the end of June, this is what's happening in Singapore, across the world, this is warming up. And there is no there is no way at the moment to stop it because our leaders don't want to use stuff that they have already criticized. They don't want to be embarrassed. And sadly, they would prefer the storm to come than to acknowledge where they could have done better. That's the kind of leaders you have these days, and you only have them because that's what you've picked. So if there's one lesson for all of us to learn is how to pick better leaders. But the point being, we are on the brink of a very serious wave that's going to manifest in multiple different ways. Those who are wise will know that you're not going to see severe COVID-19 like what you had seen before. This is a completely different presentation. But believe me, the mechanism or the mortality could be significantly higher. I'm not saying that to cause fear. I'm just saying this so that you get prepared. There are no easy ways out of this. But if we're not prepared, we have very, very little chance. So again, just as I close off, remember, click the subscribe button here. If you are interested in joining us on the recording for the next course, that's available here in the link below. And finally, if you want to join this advanced course, please click on that link below and we will be able to learn together. So have a great evening and we look forward to bringing you more information in the near future.